Hi, I'm Louise Field. I'm founder of the Door Your Pelvic Floor and we offer CPD training to fitness and health professionals so um, that they are empowered with how the pelvic floor works in a reactive way for their clients or their patients. We also offer the Adore Your Floor program to women in the community to help resolve pelvic floor issues. And I'm delighted to be joined here today with the lovely Laura Fick. Laura is a midwife. Hi, you're Laura. Hello. <laughs> and a Pilates instructor, but also an Adore Your Floor coach. And we felt it'd be really lovely to be able to offer an antenatal session that is accessible to all women online. Um, Laura, thank you. For Hi. Thanks for um, having us today. So I'm really excited as well to be here to offer some antenatal information to women from the comfort of your own home so that we can empower you with information to go forward and prepare for your birth. So um, I hope you enjoy and I hope it helps to give you a little bit of information and help along the way. Absolutely, Laura. And I think with you having your midwifery experience, as well as working with women in the community with their Pilates and um, with the Adore Your Floor program, mm -hmm. we're in a prime position to be able to show so many different angles. Um, everything yeah. we are going to teach is evidence-based, 100% uh, evidence-based, and we also follow NHS guidelines as well, so that you have some um, confidence in, in what we're giving to you today, everybody. Um, so yes, pregnancy, well, we, first of all, we go through lots and lots and lots and lots of physical changes. Um, and one of the changes would be our posture, because what can occur is our breasts will grow and our chest can then become a little bit tighter and then our upper body can become a little bit rounded and tight around the thoracic area here where my hand is and the shoulders. So that is one of the first physical changes that I want to bring on with our session today. But there's things that you can do to help that, isn't there, Laura? There are, and I'm just thinking about, as you're mentioning the posture and the thoracic area, it's often um, due to the growing, um, the baby growing and taking up more space in the abdomen. So your diaphragm here, which is at the top of the abdomen, it can actually be four centimetres higher in pregnancy. So you can imagine the impact on your lungs and your breathing. There's a lot of women that do experience breathing problems in pregnancy, and that's why. So um, it's really important to open out your chest in your posture and to think about that lovely lateral thoracic breathing so that you're breathing outwards rather than downwards to get really fill your lungs and get a good breath. So while you're you're saying that then Laura, if I put my hands, I'm actually got my hands, should I lift my top up? <laughs> if I put my hands on my rib cage here, and then I if you would like to talk through breathing laterally, and then my fingertips then will show what's going on, yeah? So breathing breathing laterally, um you could you can do it all the time, whether you're pregnant or not. Um, in, in early pregnancy, if you haven't physically got a baby that's taking up space in the abdomen, um, you can still breathe laterally because you engage your lower abdominal muscles. Um, and by doing that, you are, you're, you're creating a tension in the lower abdomen, which means that the breath doesn't, can't really travel downwards, it travels outwards instead. So you can see there with Louise, as she breathes in, her lungs open outwards and you see her fingers spread and open outwards. And as she breathes out, her fingers shrink back in. So that's that lovely outward breathing. So this helps to really fill your lungs and use your lungs, the whole of your, all of your lungs, rather than just that top layer of your lungs. Because if you take little shallow breaths, Yes. You, you actually do impact on the pelvic floor because your breath is connected. That diaphragm that I was describing to you is the top of the, the um, abdomen and the pelvic floor is here at the bottom. So as you breathe, they move together. 
And if you speed up your breathing, if you're not taking those big, deep outward breaths, and you're breathing little shallow breaths, sometimes they can get out of sync. And then your pelvic floor isn't working with your breathing. That's, so, that's very true, because um, yeah. I'm going to get this little um, gizmo here. If we um, now lead on from where you were saying, Laura, if this was our core cool unit and the diaphragm is sitting here and the lower abdominals are here mm. and the lower back is here and this is the pelvic floor, that whole group works together with their breath or they like to work together, don't they, Laura? Okay. And so as we exhale, you'll see, if you were looking at the pelvic floor group, the pelvic floor comes back to its resting tone. I'm trying to keep the ball together here. Hold on. The pelvic floor comes back to its resting tone. As I inhale, that pelvic floor group lengthens. But there's the reaction on the diaphragm, the lower tongue, the lower back, as well as that pelvic floor. I'm going to just do another couple. Now, we are breathing all day long. But as baby gets larger, that diaphragm then hasn't got so much space. And so quite naturally, very often, the mum will start to breathe through the side of the rib cage and also the rear of the rib cage, just because baby, where's my ball, is sitting right under here and takes up some of that space. Is that correct, Laura? That's right, yeah. So you don't have to um, feel a restriction in your breathing necessarily because the baby's taking up more space. You can use this outward and breathing into the back of the lungs as well practice those lovely deep breaths and they're going to help you in labour as well so it's a really good um, trick to practice and just to, to really keep practicing those lovely deep breaths and it helps to oxygenate you, oxygenate baby, helps to um, release nice calming hormones that will help to relax you whether you're in pregnancy or in labour so it's, it's, it's a good thing to practice. It is um, and all muscles actually like length, and that's including our group of pelvic floor muscles, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Um, they, they will gain that length with our breathing through the side and the rear of the rib cage as and when we haven't got that space in the front. So, so we're exercising our muscles just by breathing. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah creating that length and flexibility. It's not just the strength in the pelvic floor is it I and mean, then you know the muscles surrounding the lungs and the diaphragm is the flexibility the movement that your body allows with each breath so this is why when you start to take deep breaths you may be able to start by breathing in for two breathing out for two and then as you start to you know uh, increase um the breath then you, you might be able to to take deeper breaths so then you might be able to breathe in for and out for five and you've got that that greater lung capacity that greater flexibility and then that's mirrored by the pelvic floor yeah because our our core unit loves that movement that's going on um mm. so to help with regards to breath our posture does make a difference because if mm. our chest gets tighter and our shoulders get rounder then automatically it's going to shorten our breath um and we are going to lose some of the capacity that we could gain. And so I totally recommend that in pregnancy that we stretch our chest muscles to get some length because they shorten. They, they, they like to shorten because we have these big babies here. So one of the stretches you can do for your chest is to just literally bring your arms behind you and squeeze through your shoulder blades. And that in itself is just a nice stretch there. You could have your arms folded behind you even. That's entirely up to you. Um, so that's one nice stretch. Um, there's another stretch, Laura, that I really love and adore. If I, um, you use um, a birthing ball in, in the maternity ward. In the fitness studio, we use a fit ball. It's the same thing. So I'm gonna just bring the camera down here. 
I haven't got a crit ball or a birthing ball, so I'm going to use my furniture, but this just shows you can use anything, can't you, as a prop. <laughs> so imagine that Louise is, is holding on to the birthing ball in front of her instead of the bench that's there. So you would use the birthing ball to hold on to and roll on, and you can rest on top of it. And, yeah, so if we're thinking of a stretch... We have this stretch through here. And what's going on here with my hips here, Laura? It's really opening the pelvic outlet here. So as um, Louise is arching her back and opening her hips outwards, it's creating more space in the hips um, and in the pelvis, which is a really good exercise for releasing tension in pregnancy. But it's obviously going to be beneficial if you were to practice this in labour because it helps with the descent of baby's head, leaves lots of room for the head to come down. And then the rocking motion there with Louise's hip, it's nice for releasing the tension and encouraging that head to come down as well. So it's a great position. Yeah. At the same time, I'm getting a beautiful stretch throughout my thoracic area of the spine. But then if I wanted to bring in a postural exercise, I could come from here, to then come into a three quarter plank, drawing my shoulders down the spine to then come back through into that stretch because the body loves being on the move. And so this is a lovely way that as an exercise in pregnancy to gain strength and nice mobility. Mm. And that would be a lovely exercise in um, labor as well if you were contracting. So you would often, if you're, if you're moving through a contraction, it takes your mind off what's happening. And then you've got the double effect of the movement helping with the baby's head descending. So having that rocking motion from front to back is really soothing. And then in pregnancy, obviously, you've got a lot of tension there. You might have a desk job where you're sat at your desk all day. You might have been on your feet all day. So... That's a really nice release exercise to practice at the end of the day. Brilliant. Another stretch I like is a nice um, side stretch. You could use the wall. I'm going to bring my camera up just a touch. Um, you could use the wall, um, but you could do the sitting down as well, where your feet are firmly on the floor, and then you're just reaching over, keeping the hip down towards the floor, reaching over and coming out again. On the move is always nice mm. because we want to keep the muscles as balanced as possible. So trying it on the right, trying it on the left. If one side feels tighter than the other, to repeat the tighter side and to breathe. Go back to breath. Go breathe with that stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So there is a couple of those um, stretches that we were thinking about, but we were. Um, it's very important for us to make it really clear that you don't want to overstretch either <laughs> in um, in um, pregnancy and also post post birth as well. Um, Laura, would you like to explain? You've got a chart there, haven't you? I have. Yeah, let me find it here. Okay, so I've got a little graph here which helps to show you the release of hormones um, during pregnancy that's a good position so, and hold it there that's good yeah is that good yeah okay so um you'll see three hormones that are there on the graph the green line is a big peak in the hcg which is what um, pregnancy tests um test for and um, so that's not involved in the flexibility um and the increased stretch that we were talking about but the other two lines, the blue and the orange, are progesterone and estrogen, which gradually rise throughout your pregnancy. So you can see why you would become increasingly um, more stretchy and flexible because these hormones make you uh, stretchier. And there's also a hormone called relaxin, which does the same thing. So they um, increase the length of your muscles and ligaments. And they, there is a risk that if you were to be hypermobile or overstretch, that you could, you know, you hurt yourself. So um, what Louise was going to go and say was, was how uh, you should kind of restrict your stretching a little bit. So how would you yeah. explain? Uh, well, I, I explain. Pregnancy? Yeah, um, as a general, mm. pregnancy 
postnatal or none of the other, yeah? It just, you know, generally when I'm teaching my fitness, eight out of 10 on intensity with stretch mm -hmm. because um, the way our muscles like to work is to work with our body, but also protect our body. So we overstretch to a painful um, criteria. So let's call it one to 10. If I was to stretch on a number 11, where it's oh, 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 then my muscle won't naturally want to move with that stretch anyway. It will actually hold back and protect me for self-defense. In pregnancy, because of the change of hormones, we do need to be more careful, um, particularly around the pelvis area meet our pelvis um because there's lots of joints here and um laura's going to explain about the pubic symphysis in a moment so my recommendation would be to actually try to stretch between six to eight out of ten at the max particularly around the pelvis area um yeah i'm going to bring the pelvis up you can see there at the front of the pelvis that louise is showing you that you've got the the, the two uh bones at the front of the pelvis which meet and that is your symphysis pubis. So in the middle of those two uh, areas of bone there is cartilage so it's actually a joint here and um, imagine that these are the two bones that are meeting and you've got the cartilage in between. Where you've got this increased stretchiness in pregnancy, like with all your other joints, this area can move a bit more. There's another reason not to overstretch in your pelvis and in your hips because if you overstretch here, it can be really painful because there's a bit more movement there than when you're not pregnant and also postnatally. So just to be careful not to overextend the stretches and keep it at about six out of ten. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. But so likewise, to help support the pelvis, mm -hmm. it's really good to actually work the glutes. So if I turn the pelvis round. Our glutes would be sitting here and here. It's nice mm -hmm. to work the glutes so that they can help support the pelvis and have some nice strength in the lower back as you would for the lower tummy and the inner thigh, outer thigh, front thigh, back of thigh. Um, so that we have got some, st um, some good muscle power to help support the pelvis. Because if we look at the pelvis um, when I'm standing, I'm going to bring the camera down just a tad. Da -da. Is that it's going to support my torso, which is actually a significant weight, and it's also got to be able to support my limbs. And my pelvis is involved with every action that I do all day long. So when I sit down, my pelvis will move as I stand up, as I walk. Um, move and groove around and have a dance around, that pelvis is going to be all moving and grooving. We do have 45 muscles attached to this pelvis. Um, that's on the inside and on the outside. Some of them being these real big glutes in inner thighs, front of thigh, back of thigh, tummy and back. Um, and so if we have a nice reactive and toned thighs and glutes and lower tummy and back, then that's going to just help keep us strong for our activity in the day to help us keep our posture, to then help our breath, and also give us a good resting tone for the pelvic floor group that are sitting at the base of the pelvis. But we can talk about that more later. Yeah. Um, imagine the need for more strength there as well during pregnancy because you've got an increase in weight from the baby. So if you are working on your strength throughout pregnancy, um, as well as your flexibility, then you will be creating this supported network to hold up, you know, your spine, to support your abdomen and to make you strong for labour as well. So don't be scared of doing any strengthening exercises and, and, and stretches. It's just kind of knowing your limits and um, not doing anything too crazy that you've not been doing pre-pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, one of the exercises that I like, um, you can do it with dumbbells, you can do it with um, a dyno band, is an exercise that will involve the posture so that we can bring in these upper postural muscles. I'm going to again just bring my camera down just a tad. So all I'm going to do here, Laura, is have my foot on the band and as I'm standing tall, I'm going to keep my knees soft and you could just do the arm work if you wanted to. But mm. You can add in the leg work as well. So as you improve and you, you find that you've got that coordination, you could bring the upper and the lower body in. But that's a, that's a full body workout that Louise is doing there. She's working 
her arms, she's opening her chest, which will encourage that lovely deep breathing. She's working on her glutes, on the legs, you know, and at the same time, you can bring in the pelvic floor exercises that we'll be covering later for activating the pelvic floor to help you through the movement and not forgetting the abdominals as well. So to maintain the posture throughout, you'd be engaged in the lower abdominals throughout the exercise. So that's a great exercise. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also the squat, um, because with our thighs and glutes having to support us in different positions in, in labour. Um, so um, you were suggesting to me how, well, the, the, the plie squat is nice. Yeah, well, that's a nice wide squat to allow for a bump. So often um, bump, Laura. when we're further on in pregnancy, we tend to need a bit of a wider stance anyway to allow for the bump. So yeah, if you kind of come down into a, a wider squat and PA your feet out with to support your knees, that's a bit more comfortable. But also it is, it is a stretch of the pelvic floor and the inner thigh muscles. So to, to practice your pelvic floor exercises in this position as well, so as you lower yourself, engage the pelvic floor and as you rise, relax, Good. A double exercise there. You oh, yeah. Saying, um, in birth, it's quite handy to have these muscles nice and strong, isn't it? It is, yeah. Often there's a lot of squatting involved. If, you, if you're active in your labour, you might be kneeling on the bed. Um, and it can um, be quite strenuous. You know, you, your muscles have to work hard to maintain these positions. But it is a good idea to move between the positions as well, because just the movement helps to um, look at the centre of the baby's head again. But you can see um, where Louise was there just before she was holding on as well. So when you're in labour or when you're practising antenatally, you can hold on to something, whether it's a birthing ball, whether it's a bench, whether it's a bed, hold on and support yourself if you find the exercise too strenuous. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. So I think the key thing is if you um, are exercising in pregnancy, it's, it's highly recommended um, because we need, our, we need to exercise our heart and our lungs, our bones, uh, just general active activity is, is really highly recommended. Um, I would recommend that you don't go strong into something you're not used to doing without having the guidance from a pre and postnatal coach. Um, and just listen to how your body's feeling when you're tired. Listen to when you're tired because your body's talking to you. Mm. Um, but likewise, you can feel weary, but go for a, a nice steady walk and you feel more energised. Mm. So it's, it's, it's really, really listening um, and thinking about how your body is feeling to maybe add some stretches in, add some toning and take advice along the way. And also all of the endorphins that you release when you exercise and when you move. It can make you feel more positive, um, even if you don't really feel like doing much. You can just have a few stretches, a little bit of a move about, and you just can feel better for being active. And that that goes for everybody, but especially during pregnancy and postnatally. You know, you, you might have days where you don't feel like doing much, but if you do a few exercises, it might lift your mood and make you feel a bit better about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It always gives me um, more energy and I don't have to do a hard workout to get those endorphins. It can yeah. be really, really tiny. Um, even if it is just walking to the post office or something, it can give you that fresh air, that vitamin D. It, it's worth everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. so, yes, we totally recommend you um, keep active um, on, on the advice of your pre and postnatal instructors and your midwives and your health professionals. Um, so that's that's lovely. Are there any stretches that we feel that we need to also add in? I think we're kind of there, aren't we, generally? Yeah, you kind of just at the end there were doing um, the cat-cow stretch, yeah. which is um, a good one for releasing attention again in the lower back and in the hips and pelvis. Um, opens up the pelvic outlet, like we've mentioned before, and it often gives um, an external stimulus to the internal exercise which is happening. So as you come up into cat, 
an arch here. You'll be using your abdominals and using your pelvic floor here. And you breathe, continue to breathe, exercising the muscles while you're breathing. And then as you move through to cow, nice breath out. You can relax the pelvic floor and the abs here. And that reaffirms that relaxation because it's just as important to relax the pelvic floor as it is to do your pelvic floor exercises. Learning to relax your pelvic floor antenatally is a really good tool. So this is a great exercise to practice. I think that's a, a really great way to lead us into the pelvic floor muscles, actually. <laughs> Let me um, bring you to these muscles here. I'm going to bring the camera back up. Okay. So everything white as bone. And then if we look at the base of the pelvis here, we'll see that there's the pelvic floor muscles. And so we have, there's a group of muscles here. So this is one layer. And then if I turn the pelvis under, you'll see the bony points here and here on the coccyx and on the pubis bone. And then you'll see the muscle that's underneath. You'll see that here we have our perineum, our anal sphincter, vaginal entrance and the urethra. Yeah, and this aids some structure and some support and it's a passageway for our excess. But in between these muscles here at the bottom and in between these muscles here that you can see there, there are additional muscles in between the two. And all of those muscles have to move and groove and talk to each other. Some are shortening, some are lengthening all day long. They are singing and listening and talking. Um, and so, um, it's really important for us to understand that the pelvic floor group of muscles need to have a coordinated balance to be effective and reactive. Just like you would if there was any other group of muscles within the body, for example, the shoulder. So we have our rotator cuff muscles sitting here and oh, they, these three muscles here could be fine which means that taking my arm up to all the different corners there is no problem. But this particular muscle, every time I take my arm back, it catches. And I'm like, oh, oh. Um, and so this one type muscle actually creates a problem for my whole shoulder. And so we do need to consider this for our pelvic floor. But one of the things that we can really help automatically um, lead us into a good direction for our pelvic floor and in pregnancy in particular is that posture keep going back to that posture open your chest retraction muscles for the upper back area the way we sit our pelvis will then encourage us to have this lovely reaction in our core because if again we look at the base of the core where the pelvic floor group are they love this length now we're breathing twenty thousand times a day without extra activity and the pelvic floor muscles crave that length yeah and that length really helps those muscles work well together to be re reactive the pelvic floor group are about this side kind of size and they do a few things and one of the things that they would do is relax to let stuff out so if we're thinking of what we need to let out, that will be our bladder waste, our bowel waste. And if you're having a vaginal delivery, then delivery in labor. So they need to be able to relax to let things out. And then they come back to resting time. They also relax to let things in. So that could be um, on an internal, it could be intimate relations, it could be all sorts of things there that we may need to let in, but they also contract to help keep things in. So we're thinking about how they need to relax on a labor delivery. Then once again, we go back to that breath, we need them to naturally be able to have some nice length going on there. And our normal good, you know, good posture with the stretch of the chest and the thoracic area, the length of the spine with muscle balance working together can help allow that natural length that those muscles like to have, which leads us into 
being able to relax our pelvic floor, which goes back to those positions that we were just doing, Laura, isn't it? When I was on all fours and coming yeah. in and out. That's a good one. The, the, the cow position when you really open out the pelvis and relax the pelvic floor. There's also the um, exercise when you lay on your back supported in pregnancy and open the legs out. Um, and this is a really, really good one to learn and to make because you might need to you know, do this position for an examination or you know you might hold tension here in your inner thigh. And it's a really good way to relax your legs out, breathe and relax the pelvic floor. If you can learn this now, then it's a great tool for you later because if you're in labour and somebody trying to encourage you to relax, often we hold the tension in our legs and say, relax your legs, relax your legs, and you haven't practiced it before, you don't really know how to switch off of those muscles, it's not a great time to start because you're obviously anxious. But if you practice beforehand and you really relax those legs out like Louise is doing and rock the pelvis, encourage those inner thigh muscles to switch off, breathe, Relax the pelvic floor. Wonderful. Lovely. Yeah, really good. Well done. <laughs> yeah. I'm enjoying the movement. I'm loving <laughs> it. You're nice and relaxed there. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, because actually, when we come to practicing um, a, a muscle exercise, then we need to actually have a full length of muscle to bring in a, a good engagement and contraction as an exercise. So that leads us to the pelvic floor exercises. Um, so Laura, we have a lot of endurance muscles within our pelvic floor group, don't we? Why do we need the endurance muscles in the pelvic floor group? Um, or why do we want to work our endurance and, 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 and add some strength to our muscles in pregnancy? Yeah, yeah. So our endurance um, muscles are the ones that we would be able to hold in if we needed a wee. So these are the ones that if you're out shopping and you feel like you need a wee, but you, have, you haven't got a toilet to go to yet, you hold in, you hold in, you hold in those muscles until you get home and then you can go for a wee or when you get to the nearest toilet. And this uh, is even more true in pregnancy because those endurance muscles are having to work harder to um, uh, hold the weight of the baby as well. You've got that increased intra abdominal pressure on the pelvic floor so it's even more important than ever to work on those endurance exercises to create the strength in the pelvic floor to help you when you're moving when you're exercising when you are needing to hold in a wee until you get to the toilet these are the muscles that will help you do all those things yeah and they help support the weight of baby as well yeah um, they do they do. And if you do them now, then later they will recover better as well because they'll be stronger. That, that's lovely. Um, so before you practice a pelvic floor exercise, it's really essential to relax. Mm. Because if I'd done a shoulder press, I would begin my shoulder press exercise from the base and I would lift all the way up and come all of the way down to get a full range of movement for my exercise whereas if I began halfway up I wouldn't be working the muscles as effectively mm. yeah so before we practice a pelvic floor exercise we've got to relax um so I'm going to just bring the camera down so you can see my bum so if I'm sitting upright like so then I've got engagement of my lower tummy I've got an engagement of my lower back and there will be an engagement of my pelvic floor group, just because I am up nice and tall and sitting tall. If I was to then relax, if you can see how the pelvis moves there, my, my pelvic floor group will also relax a little bit. So that's one way to just relax. And then ah, check you've got a a floppy tummy going on <laughs> and that you're not holding in on the tummy and that your thighs are relaxed rather than being up here initially. 
Um, I would like to point out that it's not because you can't do a pelvic floor when you're sitting up or standing up. Of course you can, you need to be able to do that. But when you're first trying to get into that mode, because too many women actually, and men, actually are holding onto their pelvic floor a lot of the time, aren't they, Laura? Mm -hmm. So it's really good to ensure we are fully relaxed. And some of those exercises we've done earlier could actually help us feel when it relaxes, like that cat yeah. now. I was just thinking that actually, and with the exercise when you had your um, legs open and were relaxed and your legs out, that's a great position to be in to really feel your pelvic floor because you will really feel the full range of the relaxation and the contraction. You would feel that, that, yeah that whole movement, all the ligaments and the muscles stretching and relaxing throughout the exercise. So as you would say, I'm going to show the contraction, you would relax in between. So you, you have to relax to feel the contraction. Yeah. So you would start with a nice deep breath out. Relax the legs out, you know, relax the pelvic floor here. And then you would draw up the pelvic floor and feel that full range of movement. And you could, yeah, like Louise is doing, mirror it with your legs. So that's another way of reaffirming that you're contracting and you're relaxing, giving you a visual stimulus to go with the exercise. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're going to talk through a pelvic floor contraction. Um, as we're probably very aware, we um, can see our bicep curl move, we can see a shoulder press move, but we can't actually see our pelvic floor muscles working visually with our eyes from the outside. So we like to use our hands to give us the sense of touch to help our brain tell us where we are going to, whilst keeping the buttocks switched off and, and the tummy muscles switched off. So again, I like to bring my hand towards the tail end of my spine, towards the coccyx, towards the pubis bone. I like to exhale and relax and keep the tummy soft and keep my thighs soft. And then I basically, to bring in that engagement of the pelvic floor, is I draw up through my rear exit as if I'm trying to stop myself from passing wind. I'm going to bring that camera down just a tad more. So I draw myself up on the rear exit, but then that will naturally have an impact on my muscles along the perineum and the vaginal exit. And then I stop myself from having a pee just to, in the front of my pubis bone. And then I would actually relax. I'm drawing up. And then I would relax, fully relax. I would draw up and then I would fully relax. Laura, why do we draw up from the rear exit first? It's so important that you draw up from the back, so from the coccyx, which is your tailbone, and the anus, which is where you would like hold in if you need to go for a poo or need to um, pass wind because these are the biggest part of the pelvic floor. You can see in this picture, look at all of the muscles around the end of the there. And if this area is ignored and you're just doing the pelvic floor muscles at the front, as if you're stopping going for a wee, without engaging the muscles all the way along the sling from the back to the front, then you're not gonna have a functional pelvic floor. There will always be that weakness that Louise was talking about. So wherever there's a weakness in the pelvic floor, your body will find it. <laughs> it's just, it's like water running down a river. If it finds a little crack in the side of the river, if there's a weakness there, it will go down that route. So this is why it's so important to exercise that whole sling and muscle. That's a lovely analogy, that really <laughs> um, And we have um, two different types of exercises that we recommend, and that is your endurance contractions and engagements and release, and then your, um, your power um, engagement and release. Mm -hmm. um, and they're done in exactly the same format from posterior to anterior. I'm gonna bring that camera down, the camera's up and down. Posterior to anterior. Again, it's drawing up from the rear exit and then drawing up towards the inside of the pubis bone. You'll see that it's a, 
an escalator. It's like drawing up, 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 up. Now, there's different analogies that you could use. Um, it could be to squeeze up through your anus. It could be to stop yourself from passing wind. It could be to draw up through the back door. It could be to, um, many different ways that you can think about it. And then you're drawing up to stop yourself from having a wee or draw up to the inside of your pubis bone. Um, but that sense of touch really does help. So it's worth taking some time to close your eyes, give yourself some uh, on your own where you can be methodical to actually feel what's going on and feel it relax afterwards. That's a mm. real good confirmation that you've done the exercise, but also a really good confirmation that you are back because we can't re then re-recruit if we aren't fully relaxed as effectively. Um, so if I was doing an endurance um, engagement exercise, I would be drawing up and it's really important to keep breathing, isn't it, um, Laura? It is, yeah, just the, the um, effort of breathing adds to the exercise. But if the pelvic floor is drawn up in a long hold exercise, and then we're breathing on top of that, you can see how that intra-abdominal pressure would push down on the pelvic floor. But if the pelvic floor is held up, it's having to work a bit more. So the breath is, is helping us with the exercise. It adds to it and then also it helps with the oxygen and the blood flow to the area. So it's so important to keep breathing. Don't hold your breath through an exercise. Absolutely. Um, notice that after, on the endurance hold, I am aiming to hold up for up to 10 seconds. But we know that as baby grows, it's going to be harder to do the contractions as well because of the additional weight. But also we know that quite commonly women can find that three seconds is their maximum, but you would build up, build up so that you can hold for 10 seconds. But after your 10 second or three second, however much your endurance is, when you relax down with control, you would wait a period of time for maybe 10 seconds before you repeat that again. It's so important to, to focus on that lowering phase as well. So like if you were lifting a weight and you were to pick it up and then you were to boom, just let it go, you're, you're not making the most of that lovely lowering phase because that's a strengthening phase as well. You're using different muscles in the lowering phase so you're getting that balance of lifting and relaxing. And then, as Louise said, after the relax, when you relax the pelvic floor, wait 10 seconds before you lift it up again, because then you're confirming the relaxation. You're giving yourself a moment to recover, and then you can lift the pelvic floor up effectively again. Because if you're doing one bump, bump, bump on top of the other, it will get tired. So it, again, it's just as important to contract the pelvic floor as it is to relax it get that balance absolutely and i mean again you're going to find this way that suits you so you could think okay so rear exit front exit and you know that everything in between is going to come up with you so um that's our first exercise endurance and then there's the um the power and the power is to help support you when you cough laugh sneeze um jump and that would be up down up down up, down, but I'm still coming from posterior to anterior. That's it, you're still feeling that full contraction and that full relaxation in the one movement. You're not just kind of stopping halfway and then, um, you know, pulling up the pelvic floor there. Really feel that relaxation. So if you're stopping halfway, you're never really relaxing the pelvic floor and it will get tired. You know, the endurance that we were talking about. And then as you can see there with Louise, even though it's an up and a down motion, it's not as it's sometimes described as a quick flick, you know, like this with your pelvic floor. It's like a jellyfish. You're drawing up the pelvic floor and you're letting it go. So you've still got that lowering phase, that control on the lowering phase. That's it. Good, good. Yeah. And that's a good exercise to use, like Louise was saying, when you're coughing, sneezing, jumping, um, but also if you're active during exercise, bending down to pick something up, 
engage in the pelvic floor to um, protect yourself in the lowering phase and then relax in as you come up. That's lovely. And the recommended guidelines are to do three sets of 10 of the endurance and three sets of 10 of the the um, strength ones um, every day. And the benefit of using that in pregnancy is that it can help speed up the second phase of labor. Is that correct, Laura, in theory? Yeah, you can imagine if you're- Start the delivery, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it helps as well with a cesarean because you will still be carrying a baby for up to nine, 10 months. So you've got that endurance of the pelvic floor um, and, you know, any kind of work that you do to strengthen that pelvic floor is going to help you afterwards. But if you have a vaginal delivery and you've got the strength there in the pelvic floor when it comes to pushing um, and you know how to engage this muscle group, you're really empowered with the information of how to use your body when it gets down to the nitty gritty bit of, of pushing. Um, and if you've also practiced the ability to relax the pelvic floor, so you've got that that wonderful ability to be able to use your muscles, but also relax your muscles. And you do this with your breath. So you can imagine how the power that you've got there in your muscle group will help you if you're in the pushing phase. The relaxing ability that you've got will help with the head descending in uh, delivery. And then also the ability to breathe throughout is going to have the double whammy effect of working with that muscle group, but also releasing those lovely relaxing indoor, um, uh, hormones that will help you to relax and to relax the muscles in labour. That, that's brilliant, because we said earlier on that the pelvic floor ha relaxes to let stuff out. Yeah. So if there is a vaginal delivery, we need to be able to relax to help ease out baby. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And then, and then, you know, during labour, there might be, um, you know, some sort of tearing that's involved and you might have to have some kind of suturing and there might be a, an element of repair that has to go on in the pelvic floor. So if you've done the groundwork and your pelvic floor is already strong before labour, then you're already helping and promoting that area to heal and recover afterwards as well. Yeah, and, and so this is where we come back again to groups of muscles need balance. The body loves balanced muscles, doesn't it, for mm. it to be reactive. And um, in a vaginal delivery, you know, that pelvic floor is going to be kind of like leading the way, but we need it to have that length and coordination and balance for it to have that optimum to help us and help um, yeah. just help, help make the birthing as smooth as possible. I always think it's really good to um, to have the knowledge so that you are empowered and you're prepared for for whatever eventuality is coming. So you need to trust in your body and know your body can do this. You don't necessarily have to have done all these exercises for everything to go smoothly, but these exercises help you to get to know your body. They help you to have confidence in your abilities. You know you've got that strength. You know you've got that relaxation. So you go into labour and you can go through your pregnancy feeling confident and feeling like, yeah, I can do this. Um, and you can, you can, everybody can, uh, you know, have that ability to relax and to trust in themselves. But just sometimes it just helps to, um, you know, to exercise and to have a bit of information so that you feel empowered. That, that's, that's lovely, Laura. Um, I want to mention, but I think this would be perfect for you to explain about perineal massage and the uses of perineal massage. Um, I've found that um, doing it in the bath is a really nice place, um, but you can do it elsewhere, can't you? You can do it on your bed and you can use various moisturizers, ones that we will mention in a moment. Um, but how would you do your perineal massage in preparation for labor? So it is proven that perineal massage helps with um, reducing the chance of tear during labor. And um, as you can see where uh, Louise is just pointing there, that's your perineum in between uh, the vaginal entrance and the anus. So it's a really thick strip of muscle and it's very strong. And um, it's, it's a really good um, skill again to be able to le learn to relax this area. And you can help to promote relaxation by doing perineal massage. So, 
you would do that just by you know kind of um, getting to know your body as well so you could feel the muscle relax have again that um, feedback from your own body to say oh yeah I can feel that relaxing now um, and can I do um, some perineal massage? There you go, see. So there you are. <laughs> do a little bit of external massage. Just, you know, you could do it in the bath, have a bit of relaxing music on, do it with your breath so that you're really encouraging those muscles to relax. And then you also go internally um, and you could use, you know, maybe your thumb or a finger just to push down on the um, vaginal wall, which would be leading towards the perineum. So you could fit, you would feel that perineal muscle just inside the vagina wall there. And you could massage around that area, just encouraging it to relax, encouraging it to stretch. You can go put a bit of pressure on to help that area to stretch. And if you do this regularly throughout pregnancy, then your body is prepared again for um, some of the stretching that might take place during a vaginal delivery. Yeah, because... Um... It, it's um we, that's with the hope to help keep everything nicely lubricated and, and ready for that length like you said which is um so important isn't it um so then when we are having baby um and there's a vaginal delivery going on then the way that we breathe to help that delivery can make a huge difference, can't it? I've got my band here, but I'm going to let you do the rest. But um, this band here, imagine that's the pelvic floor. Um, if you are then um, pushing baby out, but you're like going, ee! then you're kind of like drawing up on your pelvic floor. You could even try it yourself at home where you're doing yeah. ee! and everything lifts up. Whereas actually we want the pelvic floor to open. And so then there's more of a moan and a groan and a deep. So I'm going to stop there and let Laura carry oh, on. No, that's brilliant. That's perfect. Yeah, so there's a, you can see the visual. Imagine that the band is your pelvic floor. And if you are making like an E or an ah noise, there's no downward movement in the diaphragm. It's all up here in your throat. And it could have the actual effect of bringing up the pelvic floor. It kind of has that tense um, noise to it that would make everything contract. Um, this is why you hear um, women, when they're in labour, making a mmm sound, sometimes a moo sound. <laughs> and this is because an oo sound is a low sound that travels down your body all the way through the diaphragm down and as you go ooh, you will feel these lower abdominals contracting and they actually will act in the same way as if you were actively pushing so having a downward breath with a deep moan ooh, has the same effect as if you were going ooh, and pushing but you can see and imagine how much more gentler it is to use your breath and to use that low sound rather than holding your breath and, and pushing down and straining because any kind of straining could have a detrimental effect on, um, you know, on your back passage, you end up with piles and things like that, which are always like some, you know, might be a, a knock-on effect anyway or going through labour and pregnancy. But by breathing and having that lovely ooh, low moan, you'd be helping to reduce the pressure that is being applied onto your back passage and um, pushing in a gentle way with your body, using your body to, to do the pushing for you. You know, using your breath and your noise to really work those muscles and that downward motion when your muscles are contracting without even realising. Yeah. It's kind of a natural motion. Yeah, and so the pelvic floor group would be working with you and, the, you know, it, it's all working together. Everything's working. That's together. it. It would help to relax the pelvic floor, that sound. That ooh, opens out the pelvis, opens out those muscles, helps everything to relax, rather than that ah sound, which is up here and, and causes the, the contraction and the tenseness. And as you breathe, ooh, you lower your shoulders, you feel that breath travel down your body and engage in those lower abdominal muscles. And then the last place you'll feel it will be that pelvic floor. And you'll get the push on the pelvic floor with the sound, that final push, and then you'll get the relaxation with the breath. 
So it has the double whammy of the push to help with the pushing of the baby, but also the relaxation to allow for the room for your baby to come down. Oh, that's lovely. That, that's mm. really lovely. Um, one of the things that um, I think we might have mentioned it actually, um, yes, how the pelvic floor exercises can help speed up the birthing process, but also the pelvic floor exercises can promote healing postnatally, can't they? Um, because of the circulation movement going on there, the blood yeah. flow that reaches that area. So we totally recommend practicing your pelvic floor exercises. And um, that's including if you've had a tear. We don't want you to be in pain and you can't be wearing a catheter at that time. But um, basically, as soon as you are ready, begin those pelvic floor exercises to help promote that healing. Um, if you've got any you questions, them in, ask You can do them in gently. Yeah. You know, uh, go into that full on hold for 10 seconds. You could just start to activate the pelvic floor afterwards just to switch those muscles back on. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing that um, some women often ask questions about is um, diastasis and abdominal separation. Um, we know that women come 35 weeks pregnancy that really, there's, there's if I bring my hands up here, let's use my hands and you can see what we're talking about here is that basically the rectus abdominis that's been here well it will have to widen out and lengthen out through here to accommodate space for the baby so we now come 35 weeks then actually all women are going to have that separation going on now for the majority we would like to think that um, come six months postnatally that everything has come back together quite nicely sometimes though that, that can be a gap and again seek help from your women's and health public health physio um, see um, some of us at Doi Public Floor, we've got some resources that we can um, send to you, some places that we can signpost to you if you've got questions. But we will be covering that more come our postnatal session. So our next session is the Miracle Birth, which can be purchased at the website. And then we have our postnatal session, um, post birth and beyond thereafter. And we will cover some more detail with regards to the abdominals and, and post birth exercises. I was just thinking, uh, Louise, just before we go, mm -hmm. um, just to, to uh, do something antenatally to help with the chance of the diastasis and the movement in that abdominal uh, muscle wall throughout pregnancy, we should just finish on the posture setup. Yeah. To, as a little reminder of how to adjust your body so that you're engaging the core abdominals throughout your pregnancy. That's it. So, can be there, can't we? we will. That's it. So, this is the rounded shoulders that we were talking about earlier on that can happen with. The increased weight if you've got um, an increased uh, uh, size in your breast during pregnancy and of course you've got the bump which is growing so you might have this higher diaphragm and you you might feel in you you roll into this position but encouraging yourself to open out and lower those shoulders so that you're really opening out the chest for breathing and then moving down towards your pelvis there we've got the the typical posture that we all get during pregnancy and postnatally to, to accommodate for the growing bump. So as the weighted abdomen increases, your hips tend to sling forward. And when you do this, you're turning off your abs. They, they're, you're not using them to protect your spine. And you can see how your spine would be in that that kind of open curve at the back. And this is when you get lower back pain in pregnancy. So yeah, if not you a load there, isn't there? Yeah, you can imagine the load there on, on your lower spine. Um, so you can practice the um, pelvis as a bowl of water. So you tip the water out the front, tip the water out the back. And you can do this sitting or standing. I'm doing it while I'm sitting. And it's a nice release in the pelvis as well. Um, but what it does is it shows you when the pelvis is in its anterior and in its posterior position. And then you can come to a point where you realize the bowl of water, the imaginary bowl of water in your pelvis is laying flat and still. And this is when your pelvis is in its neutral position. And when your pelvis is in your neutral position, your lower abs are being used. 
and you can imagine the benefit for your posture, for your spine, and for those abdominal muscles to help with the strength in them if they are starting to move apart during pregnancy. Yeah. So it's a great, great thing to practice. You can do it any time, any place. You can be stood in the tube for somewhere. You could be stood at home and you notice yourself having these rolled, rolled in shoulders, slung forward hips, and just correct yourself. Bring those shoulders out. You know, get that, that, that pelvis in, into a neutral position and you're exercising just by standing there. And you're yeah. using your abs to protect you. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And it then can also help prevent backache. Backache yeah. is so common, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so that, that pelvis alignment being so common, as you said, Laura. And as again, Laura said, these muscles here will switch off. These are going to ache because they've got all the load on there. The pelvic floor muscles will change their resting tone. Um, because this unit loves to work together. Posture, breath muscles are much happier um so that that's really lovely laura that's really really nice um is there anything else that we feel i think we're kind of there generally aren't we i think so yeah i think we've got a few exercises to practice the posture the breathing the pelvic floor exercises obviously um yeah so there's a lot to take away and to think about and you can watch this video as many times as you like to practice the exercises and to run through it all again. So um, we're here to help you. So I think we're going to have our contact details at the end of the video as well, aren't we? Yes, we will. And then we have the Miracle Birth and the Public Floor and the Postnatal Birth and Beyond session. Um, so yes, yeah, so it's been lovely to be able to share this with you. Thank you for your time, Laura. Thank you. And please <laughs> contact me if there's any advice or information that you need. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you very much. Lots of love and um, I look forward to seeing you on our next session, Laura. Yeah, I look forward to seeing you as well, Louise. Thanks very much for having me. Thank Bye. you, ladies. Bye-bye. <laughs>